Good Thursday morning. It's April 6 and time for episode 206 of the 359 podcast. And we got Alfred Ng and Bridget Carey in the studio today. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing? We, oh, no, you go for it. Hi. <laughs> We're doing great. Uh, we got some big Scorpio news today. Um, Thanks, Scorpio. Nice to meet you. Oh, God. <laughs> If Sorry, only, it's not in packets. <laughs> if only it was the same Scorpio. Uh, but no, this is about Microsoft's uh, Project Scorpio, where it's going to be their next gaming console. Uh, they're calling it the best console ever. Where have I heard of that one before? Um, but And then uh, to lead up with that, I, we've also got my story about disabled gamers, what they're doing to, um, you know, just... just be able to work around their 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 limits and i actually talked with a, a gamer named broly legs who plays street fighter 4 and 5 with his face and he's he'll kick my ass he, he's very good at it i i've seen him play super smash brothers and which i play competitively and he can't defend him because uh, you need the left and right buttons to block and he can't do that with his like just playing on his and he's still like i've seen him play he's incredible at it so yeah yeah and then um we've you, got you got your ass handed to you i didn't play him but like i'm saying like if i did like i probably would uh <laughs> and then we our last story that we're talking about today is um the selfie drone yeah. because we all need new ways to take photos of ourselves no we don't yeah no we don't <laughs> i want a new filter <laughs> There's no new filter. I can't wait for the filter drone. (laughs) All right. Hang out, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get into the recording of the podcast for about four minutes, and then we'll be back, and we'll join you in the chat, and we'll have a lovely old time to end out our podcasting work week. I mean, here we go in three, two. Welcome to the 359, where we talk about the top tech news of the day and all the other crap we feel like. I'm Alfred Ng. And I'm Bridget Carey. So Microsoft revealed the specs for Project Scorpio, its latest project, which is supposed to be pretty much an Xbox One on steroids. Just listing off some of its stats, it's supposed to have a one terabyte hard drive with a 12 gigabyte uh, RAM. Uh, Microsoft is bragging about it as the the most powerful uh, game console ever made, which most gaming companies will brag about. And it should be capable of playing uh, 4K games. Um, So Bridget, uh, I know you've looked into this. What do you think and what potential does does this have for the next generation of games? Well, they they kind of spat out a bunch of specs that just kind of make you glaze over unless you really care about specs. You ever heard of a teraflop before? Because they got six of them. You know, and you go, okay, thanks, that that's good. But when you really compare to how it looks with the Xbox One and the PS4 Pro, it's definitely more powerful and faster than the Xbox One. And X, the, the PS4 Pro is just a close second behind. And what you're looking at is something that, uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, if, if you didn't already know, it's not going to play a new set of games. It's not a new library here. Mm-hmm. This is the same games that work on the Xbox One. But if these game makers are already are making games that work on high-end PCs, what Microsoft is doing is kind of making it so that those same games can look their best also on an Xbox, whatever they're going to call Scorpio. Um, and, and and so is it going to do much for gaming, except that if you really want to see something in, in, in its amazing 4K quality and, and it has enough processing speed to be able to render that in a way that you'll notice, well, it depends if you've got a lot of great accessories at home to go with it, like a great TV and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of games, I wrote a story today about disabled gamers and how they're finding solutions to play by working around their disabilities. Um, I spoke specifically with Mike Begim, who uh, who's better known as Broly Legs, and he plays with his face using his tongue inside his cheeks to press buttons on an Xbox 360 controller, very similar to the ones that you and I would use. It, this is amazing. There, there's no extra like add-on to the controller. No, like, he's he's using his his mouth. Nope, to do the, it's, all the, it's the same controller you and I would use. The first game he actually ever beat was Super Mario Brothers Three, and that's actually how he figured out how how he's gonna like start using these controllers. Wow. And I mean, I'm thinking to myself, like, it's already hard enough for me to figure out games. But like I was looking at the picture that the, that you had on your story about about how he's doing it. And 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 I'm I'm I'm, I'm just impressed. But yeah, um, he's doing this with kind of the help of a charity organization called Able Gamers. They c- kind of create controller solutions for people that aren't able to play um, that many games. I spoke with uh, uh, someone who visited um, who had cerebral palsy in her right arm, so she needed to be able to play only with her left hand. And it was really hard for her to play on keyboards because, you know, she had to stretch like over her thumb and she works on a keyboard all day. So like it's very strained by the end of the day. And when I was there, they showed her all these like different controller options. Like they're instead of using a mouse to like look around in a first person shooter, she kind of had like a footboard. 
where you can like put your foot on it and then you rotate it around to like to look around in the game. Are they inventing their own accessories to make it work or are companies really like now actually helping people by by making add-ons? Well, sometimes they're inventing them, but they're working with these companies. Um, they worked with a group called Evil Controllers to make a like an access board kind of thing. Um, and then, but sometimes they're also buying them. Like the foot pedal was shown off at CES. And our last story, our own Josh Goldman wrote a story on a guide on how to step up your selfie game, which is pretty much using selfie drones instead of selfie sticks. Uh, th these go f start at like $350 and can go up to $1,000. Now, for that much, I could buy like 100 selfie sticks. I really don't know like <laughs> you why. You really want 100 selfie sticks? I, I mean, I, you never know. <laughs> yeah, you could run out of them. All right. Uh, thanks for listening and um, check us out on CNET for more. All right, welcome back. Uh, I want to hear more about the your able gaming experience. Okay. It's, you know, we only ever have enough time for the podcast to just kind of glaze over mm -hmm. a lot of the details and elements. But I want to hear more about this experience you had last weekend. You traveled to D. Where'd you go? It was DC? Virginia. Virginia. Okay. Yeah. It was um, really cool. They so they have the, an accessibility lab based out of uh, Virginia. It's about West Virginia. Sorry, it's about an hour and thirty minutes outside of DC. Um, but there, you know, they have like all these shelves of like different kinds of controllers that like people can come and test out. They have like a desk that like automatically lifts up and down. So if mm -hmm. you're in a wheelchair, it can like come down or if like you're a little kid or, um, and then they have all these like different kinds of controllers. There was one that like they used to like use a 3d printer to like make the uh, stick for it. So like they can make it in kind of like, any shape that would like fit like your needs. There's one where you can play like entirely just what I like use like breathing in a tube and like pressing your tongue down or your chin down. We onto. saw a little bit of that yeah. in the video. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. And then um, when Christy Moyer, um, the girl who was getting, um, you know, trying out all these different controllers showed up, she, she came with her boyfriend, who, not her boyfriend, sorry, her husband, uh, Benjamin Moyer, who um, they talked about their relationship and how that budded through like playing video games a lot. Um, but she like was really upset that she couldn't play video games anymore with him, which was like a thing that's like a really important part of their relationship. Yeah. Do you think they're going to start actually actively developing, um, forward? I mean, have they started working on things for Scorpio? What, like accessibility? Yes. Uh, well, Microsoft is actually one of the best companies, um, when it comes to like creating accessibilities for, um, in their games. Um, at GDC, they were, uh, they hosted a panel about game accessibility there, um, and how they added these new features in where, um, you could basically allow gamers to remap their buttons on pretty much any game that they wanted. Um, as long as the developers like implemented that feature in, but it wasn't like it basically the developers didn't have to like create that feature themselves. Like Microsoft was saying, here you go, developers, we're giving you this tool for all Xbox games and you can just put it in. If you want, and remapping is like really important. That's the only way that Mike mm -hmm. um, Begum can play, you know, because uh, he has to remap like several keys to the front faces because he right. can't use the side. And that was actually something that was originally made for arcade sticks. That's why like fighting games like allowed you to remap stuff because oh, like, sure, if yeah. you didn't want to play with a controller and you had an arcade stick, you could plug that in and it's like, okay, I want punch to be here. That yeah. that was made for arcade sticks mostly. It's ergonomics. Yeah. Well. I mean, are, are we at a point where, like, I mean, the whole issue I see, obviously, is that a company's not going to make this stuff unless they see it's profitable, and, mm -hmm. and, and you, you want to see companies do more, you mm -hmm. know, to to make it, where are we at, maybe, in, in, in that realm, or is it right now still a, a a charity design kind of situation? Well, the thing is, is that they actually found that these games, um, making these changes actually ends up making it better for everybody in general. Some of them, like, it's not even that much. So there's, um in, in Overwatch... Um, the, you only need like eight keys for that. And people like that was, that wasn't like a, that's like really helpful for, for accessibility features where like, you don't need to have like a controller of like a bunch of buttons where you could just have it all on like the face buttons on that. Most people play on keyboard anyway, but it's easier to like remap it based off of that. But in, um, Uncharted 4 with the multiplayer on that, originally what they had for like multiplayer was like, oh, okay, you're on team red and you're on team green, right? Mm -hmm. But then there were complaints from colorblind players where basically like, I can't tell the difference between my teammates. Um, so all they did was change it like team red and team blue. And sure. that just like made it better for everybody. And then, um, so these are changes that like- You don't just, think about these things. Yeah. You don't like- These are just changes that just make it a better game in general. Um, there was another one in Uncharted 4 where- um, in Uncharted, like, 2 or 3, one of the gamers complained that, like, there was a part around, like, the ending where, like, you had to button mash something. 
But then there was a player um, who had like cerebral palsy who like couldn't do that because he couldn't move his hands that quickly. Right. So they just made a feature where it's like, if you hold down the button, like it'll count as the same as that. And you can just turn that feature on if you'd like. Oh, and personally, like, yeah, because there's a lot of rapid response yeah. type of moments in yeah. games. Yeah. And then in Uncharted 4, they introduced a feature where it's like you can play the whole game, like all the controllers just on one, like one hand, like single controller mode. And like a third of Uncharted 4's players actually use that feature, even though like only 1% of the population like actually needs to only use one hand. So if you get, become a power player, you you essentially kind of can use these two, two yeah, also. Pretty but, much. Yeah, pretty um, much. Like Madden 17, they introduce a whole bunch of new features for like different camera angles and stuff. Just if, like if somebody can't like see the full screen or anything like that, it mm. it just ends up making it a, it a much better game. Somebody referred to it as a electronic curb cut. In the same way that like curb cuts on the sidewalk were like originally made for people in wheelchairs. Oh, when it goes down, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. But then like you know everyone who has a skateboard, a bicycle, a stroller started using it. So that's that's the way that people look at it. Another example would be like closed captioning on TV. That was originally made for you know people that like can't hear like that are deaf. But then you know it just ended up being in every bar or any public place that had television. Oh, there you go. It's one Interesting of, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. You don't. I would never would have thought of that, but you're totally right. Yeah. So it's basically like all these accessibility features for games are just making better games and things that, you know, people actually want. The controllers thing, that's a different aspect of it, though, because if it's just one that is like not a very profitable market where it's a sense of, you know, sometimes it's, it's kind of tragic where like these companies like end up going out of business or something because it's not exactly profitable. And then they're also very expensive. Because if you're making a custom controller specifically for one person, it, it, there's like really high cost. But the issue, I mean, that's where, you know, organizations like Able Gamers and Special Effects in the UK come in where they, you know, they come up with these solutions to, to help uh, disabled gamers, like, find uh, new ways to play. All right. Well, let's go ahead and backtrack into more gaming because talking about selfie drones is a waste of time. <laughs> what? You do we have any questions don't... about the selfie drone? No. <laughs> Good. But we do have a lot of uh, kind of surprising <laughs> ho-hum attitude about the Project Scorpio. I would have thought that there'd be a, at least more balance between excitement, but everyone seems to be kind of cautiously optimistic, maybe at best, at least until E3. I'm ho-hum about it, too. It's just specs. Like, that doesn't tell me anything about the games that I'm going to play. And that's another thing that's kind of consistent across the chat. It's a lot of people share that sentiment you and I were talking about before the show started, where it's like, who cares about how much power is under the hood? Make a better game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, where do you start with that, though? That's the that's the way that I look at it. Like, imagine you're like describing a basketball player, and all you can do is like, tell me like his height. He's tall. He's like he's really tall. He's the <laughs> tallest player ever. And, like, that doesn't tell me anything. Like, you're not like what's his like free throw percentage or anything like that. But like his hand eye that, coordination. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like, tell me about the games. Like to, to throw in the counterpoint, um, uh, Eurogamer, uh, you know, who the site that had that had this exclusive look at it. You know, we still have no pictures. But they said that that they saw uh, it perform really well in 4K and had enough, you know, processing power to kind of render all this great. And you're like, OK, it's like saying I saw a player play good, you know, so you still want yeah. to see that demo. This was a weird tease to bring someone out and, you know, someone who was very you know, spec oriented is who they brought out. You know? But it worked because we're here talking about it. Because we are hungry for just some information about it, you know, so yeah. The biggest thing I want to know is, is, th is this a development name or is that going to be the final I name? I think that's the code name right I now. Yeah, hope I so because that is so pretentious and douchey. Scorpio. <laughs> Project Scorpio. <laughs> the only good Scorpio there ever was with Hank Scorpio. Um, Call me Hank. Uh, before I, I gotta, I gotta, um, break format here for a second because I just can't ignore that there, there is a joke competition going on in our chat room right now. Okay. And, uh, I just want to shout out to Aspire Link. What do you get when you put a vest on an alligator? An investigator. That was surprisingly <laughs> easy because I didn't get it when I was reading in the chat. <laughs> While you guys are doing the stories in the beginning, I'm sitting there reading the joke. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Now, now I feel like an idiot. <laughs> I've heard so many of these like jokes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a lot of people are just kind of generally, I just want to play games as Elite Brian Gaming. Go figure with a name like that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, are you leaving these comments on your own? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> if only I had that much time. Um, I mean, like, yeah, you look at, you know, the Nintendo Switch, which, you know, it, it actually doesn't have better graphics or specs than 
the PS4 or the Xbox One S, but at the same time, like they're trying, they're delivering on like very excellent games. You're so. gaming yeah. differently too, yeah. Which is you know what people are also looking for something well, that I mean, just makes you think differently. Who are the game developers that are going to take advantage of said specs? You know, uh, King Dave points out that the Xbox One currently isn't a 4K gaming console. It's upscaling because mm-hmm. no games are made in 4K. Yeah. Are people actually going to start doing that with Scorpio? Because it's going to be allegedly well, easier. Well, the PC games are able to handle that. So PC yeah, Master right. Race. Right. Too. PC yeah, Master Race. Like, but 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 you you know what I mean. You know, mm-hmm. like take those same games and maybe they'll start to look good on. That. But yeah. Somewhere early on in the comments, I I, I I'm I'm forgetting the name of who contributed this, but they said uh, uh, Digital Foundry pointed out that would uh, the Xbox. Project Scorpio would be the equivalent of like a one thousand dollar PC gaming. That would be a, oh the equivalent of it. Yeah. Like, well, isn't that's it supposed to be impressive. around five hundred dollars though? Like at least from the first tease, I remember reading things that it could be around five hundred dollars, and then there was no price set. But that's some of the early reports. So maybe there's different. I don't know if it's if if. I mean, anybody that, who, who ventures farther outside of that five hundred dollar window on a launch console is just asking for trouble. Yeah. Sony. Yeah, but just just get a PC for gaming. It's so much better. It always will be. It, it, it really is. I mean, you can get a controller for your PC to play on. And, and you can like, always upgrade it. And that's the problem with consoles, too. Yeah. You know, you're like stuck. So, oh, yeah, it's the best now. And then, then it's not that great later. Uh, we're almost out of time, but I, I like Bill's sentiment in the chat. He says, these 2.0 consoles will kill the market. Why bother with the consoles if we need to upgrade halfway through their lifespan? That's the other thing, too. The upgrade You're getting cycle. multiple versions of all of these consoles. Yeah, now yes. PlayStation 4 Pro, Xbox One S. It's Give me the good one first. Or make it upgradable. Yeah, the upgrade uh, cycle has like... Modular game consoles? I mean, if you're really into it, but then of course... I mean, that's called s- a PC. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the upgrade cycle has gotten so much shorter. It feels like phones now where like you get a new one every year. But, but No, but you, there's no need to do that, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, that's well, why when tablets- people stop waiting in line outside the Apple store for three weeks and we'll stop, you know, finally moving beyond that as a society. But it's just like, think about the difference between like the the like the weight between like the N64 and like the GameCube and like the GameCube and the Wii. And then that's when things, you know, went downhill where it's like, oh, now we've got the Wii U. Um, but like the difference between like the well, time Well, I don't think wait- Nintendo really faltered on their cycle. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they had appropriate windows in between each launch mm-hmm. just because the Wii U wasn't a great console. Mm-hmm. And they, it was an appropriate amount of time. You forget how much time really passed between the Wii and the Wii U. Yeah. Granted, the idea to rename itself kind of was weird, but that's another I mean, story. to be fair, they went from Xbox 360 to Xbox One, and now yeah. Xbox One S. Yeah. And I guess the next is Xbox Scorpio or something. I don't know. Everybody's a reboot. Just like <laughs> movies, just like everything. Game consoles are just a big series of reboots. Uh, people talking about um, possible... Uh, exclusives. What do you think the exclusive game is? Do you think Xbox is going to step up? They their... said they weren't going to do it. They weren't. That's the last I read. That like, nope, it's not going to be something. Not even something made just for Scorpio. Holy That's yikes! Ridiculous. Yeah, that is suicide. I mean, I mean can they, definitely... they can always change their mind or maybe say, "Hey, this version of the game might might have an extra type of thing," but I think it's going to all be the same. Yep. Yep. Same. I mean, I you... mean, when PlayStation's scooping up stuff like a uh, um, shoot. What did I just see the other day? Sorry, uh, total well, brain they just, fart. You know what? They got the Parappa remaster, all right? That game is incredible. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, that that's where it started. It has to stay there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, you can probably expect like another Halo, um, m- maybe another Gears of War. But... I just meant like nothing on Scorpio that isn't going to be on Xbox One. Oh, okay. That's okay. what I meant. Yeah. Like, like you're not going to get something special just for Scorpio that you wouldn't get if you didn't have an Xbox One. Yeah. All like, right. Fair enough. Uh, it's probably a good place to wrap it up for the day. Mm-hmm. What do you say? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, if you liked what you heard, check us out on CNET.com. The 359 podcast is also available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, Google Play Music. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely didn't read that off a list. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. That's the end of the week. We'll see you on Monday. Have a good one. See you. Do I need to re-record?